So yeah, we've seen a uh, dramatic increase in the number of children that we see in the emergency room mostly uh, with uh, COVID positive. So they're not really requiring increased hospitalization, but we're definitely seeing overall increased numbers. And in fact, the last seven days, we saw the most positive patients for any seven day window since the pandemic started. Um, so this is disturbing, but not surprising, right? We have a, a population that mostly is not eligible for the vaccine. Uh, th those that are not, we haven't seen a high penetration in, in the teens uh, with vaccination. We have loosened up our masking and our social distancing, which we know is very, very effective. And then you throw on there the predominant variant of the COVID right now is the Delta variant, which is highly contagious. So you put all those things together, it's not a surprise that we would see more positive patients. So what symptoms might show up in younger children for COVID? Yeah, it, the symptoms are pretty vague and pretty expansive. They're very, very similar to almost every virus that we see, but it's fever, runny nose, cough, can be vomiting or diarrhea. There can be the stomach type symptoms, difficulty breathing, alteration of mental status, their ability, you know, how awake they are, those types of things. So any of those symptoms could be a sign of COVID, obviously knowing if your child has been exposed, if there's a household contact or if your child goes to camp or daycare or whatnot, you, you know the activities of your child and, and, and the risks that they may be exposed to. When would I make that call to give my kid a test? If you're willing to quarantine them for about seven days with symptoms, whether you need a test or not probably is a moot point because you're gonna keep them home. If you want to know, is this allergies? Is this just a routine summertime cold? And I want to send them back as soon as possible. And, and we all have various reasons why we may want to do that. COVID testing could be important, right? Because we're really trying to diminish the community spread. And it's really impossible to know whether you're suffering from just a summertime cold or, or if it is truly COVID just by the symptomatology. So if you need to know that, then yes, a test is going to help you. Otherwise, if you're willing to keep them home for seven to 10 days until the symptoms are gone, then you really don't need to put them through testing. We know now when to get a COVID test, but where? Is, should we look at our pediatrician first and maybe ask their advice before just going to any old urgent care? Don't we want to go to someone that might deal with kids? <laughs> the first step should always be the local pediatrician. Um, the pediatricians, like I said, it will be variable. You know, we know for things like flu and RSV, more common pediatric viruses that we've seen historically, pediatricians have that capability in their office. Many or most may have the capability, but it's very independent by practice. So first thing families should do is touch base with their pediatrician, see what they recommend, whether they have the testing capabilities there, whether they want to send you to a pediatric emergency center, whether they want to send you to any old urgent care. Uh, you know, that would be a good discussion to have with your pediatrician. Uh, and that's why you have one, you know, they should help guide you through these times. If they are showing these symptoms, if we do find out they're positive, how do we treat them at home? What, how do we treat this illness? The treatment with this virus is really no different than the other viruses. It's really about treating the symptoms, right? So the biggest things that we worry about is their ability to breathe and their breathing problems. So uh, if the child is small and they're very congested, suctioning out the nose, getting some of the mucus out of there, if the child's a little older, getting them to blow their nose, potentially running a humidifier where they're sleeping, some extra moisture in the air can help a little bit. Uh, the other big factor that we see, both because of being so nasally congested and also because of the vomit and diarrhea, is dehydration, right? So parents making sure their child is drinking plenty of fluids. If you're running a fever, it's hot out, you're burning off more fluids than normal. If they're not taking in, they can quickly get dehydrated. And then you throw in the fact they're vomiting or diarrhea, it can get bad pretty fast. So making sure they're drinking, whether it be sport drinks, Pedialyte, uh, if it's water, is okay as long as they're eating, right? But we want them to have some sugar and electrolytes. So that's where the sport drinks, Pedialyte juices all work pretty well. Most kids, when, you, when you're sick, and it's true for adults, you don't have a big appetite when you're sick. It's okay if they're not eating as long as they're keeping hydrated. But if they're not, that's definitely a reason to come see us right away. But yeah, the, and then treating the fever, Tylenol uh, or other uh, antipyretics is important because uh, it's going to make them feel better. We've all had fevers. Treating a fever makes you more comfortable. If they're more comfortable, they're more likely to drink, more likely to act normal, and you'll feel better about how your child looks. So that's pretty much it. It's really just supporting the symptoms that you're having.
What would be something that, what are some of the uh, red flags that say, I need to get you to the emergency room or to a doctor quickly? Yeah, and these are the things I want parents to watch out for. So we worry about respiratory type stuff. So if the child is struggling to breathe, you've done all the simple things you could do at home to make their breathing easier. If they're wheezing, if they're breathing fast, it looks like they're running a race, even though they're just sitting there on your lap. If they're sucking in around the ribs, what we call retraction, those are signs they're working hard to breathe. You probably need to come see us. Let us listen to your lungs. Let us check the oxygen levels. Uh, maybe there's other interventions we could do in an emergency center. So that's probably job number one is watch the respiratory. And then the second big thing is, is what I mentioned previously about dehydration, right? So parents monitoring the intake, they kind of can get a sense of how much the child's taking in. Sometimes it's harder to know what they're losing. So simple things parents can watch for to know if their child's dehydrated or not is looking at the lips and the mouth. Is it dry? Are they drooling? If it's a younger child and they're crying, are there tears? If it's a younger child counting the number of wet diapers they're changing, older children kind of monitoring how often they're going to the bathroom as far as urination. Those are very, very simple things parents can follow and get a sense of, oh, I think we're falling behind on fluids and, and maybe we need to go to the emergency department at that point. And then lastly, if the, ever, if there's any change in the way they're acting, they're just not acting right, they're acting confused, they're acting uh, so sleepy you can't wake them up at, at a time like middle of the day when they should be up and playful, those are signs that there could be something more going on and we need to see you right away. If they know they their child has had COVID, is this something that happens afterwards and, and, and what should they look for? Yeah, so it, it's, it's multi-system inflammatory syndrome of children, MISC, and we're seeing it both at the end of COVID active illness or even six, eight weeks after an exposure to COVID where they've had COVID, where the children come down with this overwhelming inflammatory response. And that could be very, very dangerous. So if the family has any concerns of this, they should come see us. Again, it's vague symptoms. It may be fever, muscle aches, uh, not acting right, being lethargic, swollen lymph nodes, really fire engine red eyes and lips and tongue, maybe peeling skin, swelling of the extremities, any of these type of inflammatory type markers. Don't hesitate, be seen by the ER, even if we tell you, oh, it's not that and go home, that's okay. Uh, but the children who have uh, MISC tend to get quite sick, often require hospitalization and intensive care. So uh, it's important just for parents to be aware of that as we're seeing more COVID in the community, more COVID in the pediatric population, it, it, it logic would say we're gonna see more of the MISC.